Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. Recyclico's patented recycling process achieves up to 100% recovery of battery metals from lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, and aluminum. Recyclico Battery Materials Incorporated trades on the TSX Venture AMY, on the OTCQB AMYZF, and Frankfurt ID4. For more information, visit Recyclicode.com or phone us at 778-574-4444. Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR Newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. He's speaking to us from Arizona. Welcome back to the show, Mark, to our Canada Day and July 4th edition. Right, right. We have a long weekend ahead, a lot of traders taking off. Uh, interesting time. Anyway, uh, we're enjoying Arizona. It's a little hot down here, but uh, that's what you expect this time of year, and uh, market's Certainly, uh, you know, wasn't affected too much by it, except uh, that it went up. And this is traditional ahead of a long holiday weekend. Generally, if you're in a little bit of a downtrend, markets tend to reverse direction uh, coming into a long holiday. And certainly the last couple of days, uh, that's been happening here, at least for the equity uh, market. So uh, nothing unusual happening. We've got, uh, you know, a lunar cycle coming up here. On July 3rd, um, we have a uh, full moon, and we're rallying to, to, uh, right into it. So we're probably setting up a little bit of a bull trap here, you know, into or just after the 4th of July weekend. We'll see if that pans out, just trying to tie cycles in with the uh, with the market. And um, outside of that, uh, yeah, and we uh, we do. I do want to make that disclosure that I'm not a financial advisor, nor do I provide it financial advice just uh, before we get too far into it do we have a special offer for our listeners sure go to vrtrader.com you get 50 percent off it's worth uh, doing it's a big deal to get that much off and uh, you go to the website there's a promo code slot at the order page when you pick one of the newsletters and you enter the promo code 2022 half off 2022 half off so that applies to any of our Products. I would take a particular look at that annual forecast model that's been working out really well this year as a potential subscribing uh, option. There's two very distinct points of view about the stock market. Half the people say there's going to be a crash, get your money out, put it someplace safe. And the other half were saying full steam ahead, nothing to worry about. Where are you on this? Um. Well, more 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 cautious. Our cyclical work says, you know, rally uh, into this time of year and then down downward into the fall, which is somewhat traditional. And we also have a presidential cycle low due into the fall. So you know, nothing goes straight up or straight down. But uh, you know, this is a time you know to be uh, lightening up, you know, in in the market. And we're certainly seeing that to a certain degree in the AI stocks and some of the. Not all of, but some of the high flyers that make up the uh, NASDAQ 100, which, you know, put in a little trading peak here the last couple of days. Seems like money is flowing out of the big, the big, big winners and now flowing into uh, at least the last couple of days into like the Russell 2000, which is the smaller cap box and so forth. The Dow Industrials, which has been lagging, start to move up a little bit. So um, a move away from the more speculative high growth areas. Um, the magnificent seven stocks, uh, for example, you know the, the Microsoft and Netflix and uh, Nvidia, Nvidia, and uh, so forth and so forth, uh, into Amazon, of course, another one, Meta, Tesla, uh, away from those a little bit into you know other other stocks. But I still think this is sort of a short-term effect here, a little bit of a short-term summer rally and then a pullback. But you know, one of the things that I'm really writing about and talking about. I mean, there's so much going on politically and financially here. We had Jerome Powell in in um, Portugal on Wednesday with uh, Christine Lagarde and Andrew Bailey and uh, the Japanese 
uh, Governor Casio Uida, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, all justifying their monetary actions, which, you know, I disagree with and, you know, no one really talks about in their interviews. I mean, I think a lot of the, the Fed in particular, a lot of the na- na- national banks, you know, are really are doing a bad job. And frankly, uh, I'm a free market person. I think interest rates should be controlled by the markets, not by a central bank, which for the most part has done a horrible job here for over the last hundred years and actually caused more problems, including the current one we're having because of their their lack of um, monitoring of, you know, the economics and what individual banks were doing and so forth. But we can spend a lot of time on that. Meanwhile, you know, we have the plunge protection team out there. I'm not a conspiratorial person in any sense. I mean, it's real. A lot of the move in the market, I think, is a function of the Fed and the U.S. Treasury in there just as they, as there's documents regarding their uh, manipulation of the gold and silver markets over the years, and we know they play with the currencies. Uh, they're also in the equity market, so I think that much of the rally that you've seen has been engineered, you know, by the powers that be, you know, because, look, frankly, as you know, the news environment has been pretty horrible in the last several months, you know, with rates going up and a balloon flying over the country and uh, China now having a base in Cuba and the Ukrainian war, and the Russian Revolution, uh, the Civil War, and it just uh, happened but didn't happen, and, uh, you know, Taiwan, China, and, you know, we can go on and on and on, commodity prices going up, shortages, El Nino, I mean, all kinds of, we could just talk about all kinds of fun stuff. In fact, we have a lot of increased solar activity as well, um, and volcanic activity on the planet, which is affecting our our, our, you know, climate and our, wet, uh, you know, crops and growing and so forth. So, uh, you know, you needed something out there to, to you know, to, to overcome all that. So, you know, what you do is you rally the markets and people sort of forget about it. You know, if they're making money in their stock portfolio, they're not so worried that uh, China has a base in Cuba. You know what I mean? So it's, it's part and parcel to the way the markets are being manipulated. But, it doesn't mean you can't make money, you know, trading it. And, you know, we, we try to do that long and short and pick some individual names along the way. But, yeah, it's uh, uh, going back to your initial question, I don't know. I don't think this is a time of year, you know, you want to be jumping into the market. I think, if anything, you know, it's going to be choppy to down into the fall. Uh, the general statement, though, is obviously going to be, you know, some exceptions. You know, we saw some of the cruise line stocks starting to rally this past week when they and some of the airlines and uh, travel related uh, um, you know securities you know so there's always something going on they come out with a news story but a lot of these stocks are coming out of very depressed low prices so when you get a rally coming off of a big bottom that it creates some attention doesn't mean you can't trade it but there's always something going on so uh, you know even um, Space, SPCE, you know, with Bezos and, uh, you know, the, his plane taking off today. You know, that's that gives some action for his stock as well. So there's always fun stuff. Tesla, a lot going on there. Suddenly we find out, you know, this past several weeks that Ford and General Motors now love Tesla because he's got all the charging stations everywhere that they didn't really, you know, anticipate needing. And now I'm cutting a deal with Tesla. They love Tesla now. So, like I said, this... Uh, a lot of fun stuff happening, but uh, I'm not I'm playing individual stuff, but I think the whole market is, you know, treacherous for a little bit going into the fall. We'll have more with Mark Leibovit right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mark Leibovit. Mark, people in Canada and the U.S. complaining about high food prices. The Canadian Competition Bureau looked into it and found out in Canada there's only three major food companies. They trade under several names for each, so it looks like there's competition, but there isn't. And uh, in the U.S., and they said the cure in Canada for high prices would be more competition. Well, the U.S. has more supermarket chains, and yet you have high prices that really can't be explained away. It, it looks like on both sides of the border, it's just 
pure gougeflation. Yeah, there's an excuse to raise prices. There's no reason why they would bring the prices back down, right? If there's a yeah. shortage or supply chain issue and their prices, their costs are going up and they raise it, uh, you know, you'd be surprised that suddenly they start, you know, as they were jacking prices up, reversing their pricing strategy when they're making money. I don't think they're going to change the prices so fast. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But we've had a, had a surge in, in a few days of pullback, but we had a surge in commodity prices in terms of the indexes so uh, you know it's up and down sideways back and forth but you know the upward spiral we had in some of the commodity prices probably hasn't hit the retail level yet even though on a short-term basis there was some pullback the last few days so uh, I think the prices are going to stay high and we do have it, we have situations around the planet you know in terms of growing conditions uh, El, the El Nino effect uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the volcanic effect on the planet. So, you know, the, to expect lower commodity prices, uh, I don't think is, is, is realistic. And I don't think it's a necessarily a supply chain issue. I just think things are changing on, on a, on a, uh, global, on a global basis in terms of, uh, weather and you could call it climate change. I'm not really a proponent of that, but, you know, in terms of re- the realistic appraisal of what's happening with, uh, you know, and you got farmers uh, being told that they have to reduce their cow populations in the Netherlands and talk about reducing cow populations everywhere because of the supposed pollution effect is insanity. I mean, that, uh, you know, I mean, that, that starts starting. I mean, what's that going to do to prices for meat and cows? I mean, you know, you start cutting back populations of that. So uh, I think... You know, I think it's more coming. You know, I think farmland is probably still a big bargain around the world. I know a lot of it has upticked, but uh, we got to eat. And uh, so I'm a bull on the farmland and commodities. And, uh, you know, they're not, not in terms necessarily of other commodities, the metals and so forth, which have their own story and oil. But the food stuff definitely looks overall in a big uptrend. So I'm, I'm a bull there. We, you know, we have those names in our newsletter, by the way, so we, we are, have been tracking that. Now, a lot has to do with the U.S. dollar, the commodities are priced in the dollar, so, you know, the dollar, you know, really collapses, you know, that's going to be, you know, that's going to be more bullish for the commodity prices, and so we'll have to just, you know, sort of watch the dollar, too, Is but, you know, you it's always best to individually analyze each market, you know, though we say, I'm not going to buy corn because, uh, the U.S. dollar is, is you know, up or, or down. It's silly. You have to look at the, the charts and the supply demand in each of the separate markets. But as a general rule, the commodities move inversely with the dollar. So let's, we can track that for a while and see how that pans out. But we're bullish on the commodities. China is, uh, as you said, aggressively moving into places around the world, putting in a military base in Cuba, the Chinese government said, we're not militarily aggressive. We just look at opportunities, and we want to protect our trade routes. It sounds like the uh, British Empire in the 1800s. We're just protecting trade routes. So uh, let's take over part of China. Let's take over India. Well, well they've done it in Africa. Yeah. We know that. They've been there for years, and they've been acquiring land, and farmland all over the world, including in the U.S. I know... Uh, state of florida just came out with that uh, edict with uh governor desantis is that restricting any uh chinese farmland buying or real estate buying i don't have all the details in the state of florida so uh you know it's an incursion and uh the question is who owns canada who owns the united states i mean ultimately uh we're giving away our countries and china is not our friend they're cl- it's clear they're looking for global domination and militarily and economically so you know this is, can we stop it you know too much money is being made by allowing it to happen which is unfortunate <laughs> so you know some people don't want the china to be restricted because they can make money off the sales of the of the property or whatever not the, i'm not talking about the military aspect that's a whole different story so unfortunately money has a lot to do with this but uh you know, what can I say? I mean, uh, we have a lot of issues here, and they're dangerous. And, you know, if, if uh, John F. Kennedy was president, I mean, look what he did with Khrushchev and uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, 
having incursions in Cuba. You know, we almost had a war over that. Here, we have a very passive administration who some claim has been bought off by the Chinese. And, uh, you know, what are we doing? You know, uh, we're going to allow this to happen. You know, we just have incompetent people running our government who are not protecting our national interests. And ultimately, that's our economic interests and our freedoms. So uh, things aren't being managed very well. So what can I say? I mean, ultimately, we're going to see it in the markets. If things unravel any, any further, there's only so much that the plunge protection team and the governments can do to support prices if we really get into some serious conflict with uh, foreign entities or, you know, we have more of these type of you know, problems, you know, immigration, a huge issue. We have so many things going on that are politically driven. But like I said a few moments ago, you know, oh, my stocks are up. I'm happy. You know, look, my Apple computer made a new high today. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, you, what's being done needs to be done, I guess, to distract people from what's what's really happening out there. And I don't think the worst is, is uh, you know, behind us. I think, you know, you have an aggressive Fed, you've got all these new political issues we're talking about, the, the climate issues. Um, I don't, you know, I guess they can manipulate the stock market and try to make it look better than it is. And certainly we can make money at it. But, you know, if you don't have a country and if you don't have the food and you have all other kinds of issues, you know, making money is not uh, the most important thing if you, you know, look at the big picture. So anyway, we try to look at the short term and the uh, big picture and, uh, there are, there are opportunities out there, but, uh, you know, we just got to uh, sometimes step back and look at the, the bigger bigger perspective here and what's going to be done. I mean, obviously, I like to see a more conservative political administration here in the U.S., and hopefully the same happens in Canada, where things are, we're not thinking in terms of socialism and uh, cooperation with foreign entities that are not our best friends, but um, time will tell. Well, there's uh, two jobs anywhere in the world that you don't need any training or diplomas for, and that's parent and politician, the two most important jobs there are. Right. And this is why, why I admire people like you know, like the Donald Trump or uh, a DeSantis in Florida. These people were, really weren't politicians that got into uh, the political sphere. They were there. DeSantis was military, and uh, uh, Trump was just a businessman, you know, so... You need, you need fresh blood in here that isn't thinking politically and thinking, you know, for the benefit of the populace and for the, the economy. Meanwhile, uh, we have some interesting stuff coming up, you know, this summer, you know, cyclically, uh, besides what I've discussed with the stock market, uh, this possibility of maybe some low here in crude oil and in the uh, precious metals. Uh, it may have already happened. There's some, there's some cycles indicate into, into July. Uh, there's some gaps in the chart below the market that they haven't been filled yet, but maybe we got close enough. So, um, you know, keeping that buy button, you know, handy here for the metals and for crude oil, I think makes some sense here. You know, maybe even having a little position here and then getting more aggressive when we get a bigger confirmation. But I'm looking, you know, move there. And does that mean you know, we're going to see the U.S. dollar, you know, sell off more? It did hit a little trading top here. Some interesting stuff happening, so it won't be a quiet summer, Jim. I think there's still plenty of action ahead, and uh, you know we're, we're watching it and trading them as we see them. Mark, thank you so much for being on the show, and again, have a great long weekend as we celebrate the independence of Canada and the U.S. Let's, let's wave the flags and shoot the fireworks off together. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> My guest has been Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR Newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. He was speaking to us from Arizona. If you have any questions for Mark or for any of our guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at House Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.